the mind. Many of us are unaware of what goes on in the mind. Many of, many of us are unaware of what we store in the mind. Many of us are unaware of what we put into the mind. But many of us are aware of the chaos, the chaoticness, the noise that goes on in the mind. And um, so I'm just going to read some God's word to you and what it says about the mind. It says many things about the mind and many things about the heart, many things about the body, many things about the soul, many things about life. But um, here's just a few about the mind. And um, I pray that I pray that it just hits you, sinks into you, pierces you. I pray it just cha it changes your life. It, it plants a seed that no seed ha has ever been planted before. In this way, hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name. Um, all right, so Romans 8, 6 through 7 says, For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. What is the flesh? The flesh is me. The flesh is I. The flesh is self. The flesh is things that I want, things that I need, things that I crave, things that I desire. The, the, the flesh is my own plan in this life. The flesh is the importance that I see in myself. The flesh. But to set the mind on the spirit, what is the spirit? When you give your life to the Lord, when you are baptized, you are baptized in water, you are baptized in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of God that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, hallelujah, promised us. And, and so we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us once we live for the Lord, once we are followers of Christ. And so... To set the mind on the flesh, to set the mind on me, to set the mind on I, to set the mind on my own desires and my own passions, my own wants, my own needs, is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. So any, if my mind is set on flesh, so if my thoughts are, are, are if my thoughts are, always about me are always about self are always about I want I need I need this or are just constantly constantly dwelling on myself this is death and this mind is hostile is against God right and if it and it does not submit to God and it cannot it cannot so my mind and my, if my mind is totally on the flesh, my I am the enemy of God. I'm against God. I'm resisting God. I'm a rebellion against God. I'm God's enemy if I'm all I'm thinking about is myself and not on him or the spirit. You know, if I'm leading, if my if my mind is on the flesh, is on myself, and if I'm walking this day in this life, being led by this, I'm not doing the will of God at all, at all, at all, at all. Romans seven twenty three says, "But I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin." That dwells in my members. Many of us are unaware of the of the war. We hear the noise of war. We hear the chaos of war. But we are unaware of who is fighting for your mind. We just hear this chaos and this ruckus. And we get so overwhelmed with the noise. But we are unaware of who's standing on what side. 
or we are even unaware of who took over that mind, your mind. We are just constantly being bullied and bombarded with, with everything that is going on in our mind. And we do nothing about it. This is why we live a miserable life. One of the reasons why we live a miserable life. All right. So, but I see members in, a, in another law waging war against the law of my mind. Who wants your mind? Who wants your mind? Satan wants your mind. Satan wants your mind. <sighs> Satan will put lies in your mind. And, and, and he will repeat himself. And as these lies are, are, are repeti repetitive, we just hear the same old lie, same old lie. And if we hear something for so long, we start believing it. Once we start believing it, we believe this to be true of ourselves. So this, so Satan will put these lies. Uh, um, worry. Insecurities. Uh, negative thoughts that we believe about ourselves, And then we would think something. And then we start believing this. Oh, I'm too fat. Oh, I'm too skinny. Oh, um, no one likes me. It's always it's always these negative thoughts, and, and then we we truly our actions will start showing all our emotions also will start showing that these thoughts we believe to be true that are not that are only lies. So these lies are no longer lies; they become sh strongholds, and this is how the enemy. Uh, um, Put you in chains because you start once you once you believe in this lie, and you think this lie is reality and true, you're you're imprisoned in this in this lie. You're in prison, and he has chained you up, and it's called a stronghold. And he starts placing all these strongholds. A stronghold is a fortified wall. A fortified wall is an imprisonment. You know what I mean? You have this fortified wall so nothing could come in and attack. So the enemy has placed these strongholds of lies in your mind, right? So now, I mean, he has taken over your mind. He has conquered the land in your mind. And now... Your mind is a prisoner of war to Satan. This is why you got this chaos in there. If Satan rules your mind, Satan is evil. There's no peace. There's no love. There's no joy. This is why up here is so chaotic. Satan has to control of your mind. Satan has to control of your mind. And here's another thing too, the raging war, it doesn't help none. Now hear me out. It doesn't help none when you're unaware of what you put in your mind. How do we receive things into our mind? By our eyes and by our ears. What are we listening to and what are we watching? Here it is. Satan is this is the is in control of this world, right? Satan is all around. Evil is all around this world. So anything that is of the world is of evil, is of Satan. So if you're watching worldly movies, if you're listening to worldly music, if you're reading worldly books, <laughs> yeah, uh, Satan is having a heyday in your mind. Why? Because he has already implanted lies and strongholds and chains amongst your mind. But now you're just continue, continuously feeding into this. With worldly evil. You're, you're, you're not helping yourself out. At all. At all. Because you're, you're, you're just soaking in. Evil movies. Evil music. Evil sounds. And you're just watering it. You're just watering this evil. You're just watering this evil. You're, you're, you're not even fighting this war back. At all. This is why we must be aware of what we watch, what we hear, what we read. It's so much evil. There's so much. There's so much. So much witchcraft. So much um, idols. There's so, there's so much. 
And ah, uh, oh, so good, man. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. All right, so First Peter one thirteen. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober minded, set your hopefully uh, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Prepare your minds for action. Being sober minded. Hallelujah. Sober minded. Prepare your minds for action. Through this through the, every single day through the midst of the chaos and the noise we hate it. And start, instead of trying to win the battle because we are unaware of the battle we try to ignore the battle. And well, how do we ignore the battle? By alcohol. By um, weed. By drugs. We hate this noise. And we want to quiet. We want to silence it. And we do that by numbing our mind and numbing ourselves, By putting things into our, into our body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And now we become a numb or we become unaware and the noise is quiet, is silencing. This is how the enemy just pulls us along. We're slaves to sin. We're slaves to Satan. We're slaves to Satan. You see what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Oh, come on. And that's the thing too, man. It's like back to um the war of, the war of your mind. When you... Uh, Rather than even watching t uh, movies, we also look into the world. And all right, and the flesh, the body, the me wants things. You want things. So when we are looking, something attractive comes along and we see, right? And this is planted into our minds. And now we have these desires. And these passions that are so strong and we want, we want, we want, we want, we want. So that's the thing, man. It's like we're watching movies. We're listening to all these evil things, all these worldly things we're putting into our mind. We're watching. I mean, we look and we view into the world. We come across things that we want, that we see, that we desire, that is selfish and evil, right? And it turns into sin. We want, we want, we want. And then the enemy places these lies in here. So, bam! Hallelujah. So, back to um, preparing your minds for action, being sober-minded. We must be sober-minded. We must have a sober mind. God's word tells us to have a sober mind over and over and over again. And if we're constantly putting chemicals and, and, and things to quiet our mind... It's just a temporary fix. We're not even fixing nothing. We're not even fixing nothing. We're just ignoring it and we're making it worse, right? So how do we prepare our minds for action? The Lord gives us weapons and gives us uh, 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 weapons to fight this war. And how do we prepare our minds to act for action? We read, but we just don't read anything. We pray. <laughs> we read God's word. For God's word is alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword, and it is used for training, rebuking. Uh, 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 um, it's powerful, 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 and um, correction. And um, so we prepare our minds for with with, with dwell, dwelling, reading, meditating, studying, praying on God's word. And, and and how else do how else do we prepare our minds for action? Once we get the Lord, we come to the Lord. He teaches us and He gives us tools, right? And now we become aware, our sober minds. We become so aware because we give our minds to to Christ. We give our minds to the Holy Spirit, and we are could see now. We have discernment. We know what is a lie and, and, and what is not. We know what what that is from the Lord and what that is from Satan, right? And any time we have these lies, these thoughts, right? This is after the fact when the Lord is training you and preparing you and, and getting you ready for action and, and for battles, right? Um, you, uh, you, you get your thoughts, you get these lies and you, and you get these thoughts and you bind them up, you tie them up and you take these thoughts captive. 
You take all these thoughts captive, right? You don't drown them out with alcohol. You don't drown them out with weed and just ignore it. You come into here. And you are done being bullied. And you take these thoughts captive. You, you, and, and then you bind them up. And you send them back to where they came from. You send them back to where they came from. This is, you rebuke them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You already come to the Lord. And you say, take these thoughts, Father. I'll lay them at your feet, Jesus Christ. For these thoughts are not mine. These thoughts are Satan's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must beware of the mind. Everything. A lot of things. I mean, we struggle so much in the mind if we're not aware of it. And many of us are a very, unawa a very unaware of it. Right? 2 Corinthians 10, 3-6. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Come on now. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And take every thought captive to obey Christ. Being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, I just said this, we are given these weapons from the Lord, and they are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. The weapons we are given from the, the Lord have power, divine, to destroy strongholds. I was just saying this about strongholds, the walls, the fortified walls. They, the Lord the Lord gives us weapons where, that crushes these walls down, that breaks these walls down. That breaks these chains that have been tied to us for years. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. Alright. So in Ephesians 6.18. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith which, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The Bible. Praying at all times in the spirit. With all prayer and supplication. To that end. Keep alert with perseverance. Making supplication for all the saints. Praying at all times. Helmet of salvation. Guarding your mind. Right? 1 Corinthians 14, 15. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit. But I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. The mind and the spirit. I pray in the spirit. Uh, if I'm praying in the spirit, you know, I, I, I'm speaking in tongues, but, you know, and, and, and it's an utterance. But it says also to pray in my mind as well. Pray in my mind anywhere I go. Continue. Continue to pray. This is why it is so important as well to, to, to memorize scripture. You know what I mean? And, and it's like anywhere you go, constantly... Uh, um, replay and, and 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 say in your mind scripture, 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 scripture. You know, keep your mind on things that are above. You, you know, and, and never let your mind um uh, focus or dwell on things of this world. Never, no circumstance, no situation. You know what I mean? It, um, let uh, uh, be aware of what has power of your mind. You know, and be aware of your mind every moment. And we must pray, we must pray, we must pray, we must pray, we must pray. Colossians 3, 2. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. You know, set your mind on things above. Anywhere you go, everywhere you go, every moment of time, constantly stay in communion with the Lord. You know, always, always. You know what, here it is too. We're told to use our body as a living sacrifice. And using your body as a living sacrifice is giving every single thing of your body to the Lord, to Christ. You know what I mean? Our heart, our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our feet, uh, our hands, our everything, everything. 
There, you know what I mean? There's, there's, they're all connected to the body, but as well, they're all separate at the same time. You, you know what I mean? So this is why we must give all things to Christ, and we must give our body. We must, we must surrender our mind to Christ. If my mind is not glorifying Christ, I don't not, I don't want nothing to do with it. You know, let my mind dwell and meditate on Christ all the days and all the times of my life. Hallelujah. You know, I don't want to like you must be so aware because the mind many things distract and many things tug at your mind and want want your mind's attention. And and I mean, when you live in a natural world, when you live in this world, in this world, you face worldly circumstances. But that doesn't mean you have to give the power, uh, the power up of your mind to that circumstance. You know, we it's so easy when we face circumstances to try to immediately try to figure it out or figure out things or find a solution. You know, but it's like when we find a solution. We, we don't have to find the solution for God already has this has a solution. We don't have to figure it out for God already has figured it out. Right. And so this is it, man. It's like, do not worry about tomorrow's troubles. You know, and that's how what we do. We worry about tomorrow's troubles. What, 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 well, what am I supposed to do when this happens or this happens? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? No, we're, we are to trust in God. You know what I mean? We're only supposed to only supposed to worry about today, living today. What is called today? You know, many of us so are so focused on tomorrow. But here it is. Tomorrow never comes. Only today is here. Only today is here. You know, so tomorrow never comes. So and so never focus on tomorrow. Let's, let us just walk in the spirit and focus on today. Hallelujah. And I always trust in the Lord. The tr- And as we trust in the Lord, as we keep our mind on things up, uh, above, he will always lead us. He will always guide us and he will get us to where we need to be. Right. All right. So um, Philippians 2, 5 says, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Matthew twenty two thirty seven, 37. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord with Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. How do I love the Lord with all of my heart, mind, and soul? You know, in another in another um, gospel, it says, with all your strength, you know. And so, with all my mind, how do I love? Uh, this is how, this is what. Examine your mind at the end of the day, or even at, through that, throughout the day. And see, where are my thoughts? Are my thoughts more on anything else than it is on Christ? Have, have I have I thought of have I meditated on Scripture? Have I thought about Scripture? Have I have I have I just uh, um, say the casual, "Hey, Father, Hey, Lord"? Have I say the casual, "Thank you for this moment, God"? As I'm walking outside or as I'm walking to the store, Lord, lead me in this moment, Lord. Use me as an instrument to to um, share your word to someone. Use me to in this moment right now to pray over someone, Lord. And, and um, so this is it, man. It's like we walk in this world, but we're not led by this world. We walk in this world, but we're led by the supernatural world. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? So let us always dwell on what is above. You know, because we're not living this life for this life. We're living this life for eternal life, right? So this is why we we live this life for eternity. We don't live this life for this life, for this day, for, for or not for this day, but for this world. So this is why anytime we must be led by God. And, and um, oh, come on, and we must love the Lord, our God, with our mind at all times. And, and, and here it is too. And how do we do that? How this is why it is important and crucial to always read the Bible. To always, if you're not reading, put a sermon in, put a podcast in, hear something, hear God's word, or, or put music on. Uh, uh, um, worship, not, uh, not worship music, uh, praise music. Um, always feed your mind and your eyes. Feed your mind through your eyes and through your ears the truth of God's word. Why? This is this is it, man. Because if you're not filling up your mind, then someone is something is filling up your mind for you. If you're not filling up your mind, something is filling up your mind for you. 
And many of us aren't filling up our minds with, with, with what matters. We are filling our minds with worthless things. And, and and here it is. If we're not filling our minds with truth, we're filling our minds with lies. And we're not we're not filling our minds with God's word, with, with the weapons that the Lord has gave us. Uh, um, the enemy is more than happy to fill your all the empty places in your mind. And, and that's what it is, man. It's like we must continue to put His word, His truth, everything in our minds. You know. Your, your, your mind is a land. Your mind is a land. Your, and, and, the, and there's a war going on. You know, the enemy wants it. And if you give your mind to the Lord, the Lord will fight for you. And he already has victory. But if we don't know the Lord, if we don't, if we don't, if we aren't living our lives for the Lord, we don't have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a supernatural power. He is a power that isn't from this world, that helps you, that comforts you all days, at all moments, all situations, all circumstances in life. And to, to win this war inside, we must have him. So let us not even take a break. Oh, I read the Bible for two hours. Now I'm going to watch this worldly movie. No, it don't work like that. Uh, I listen, I praise, and I say thank you, Lord, for, for, for an hour. Now let me put this uh, rap music in or this worldly mu music that speaks about this, that sin, that sin, and that sin, and that sin. It doesn't work like that. Oh, let me, um, let me uh, talk about God for, for three hours to a friend. But now let me talk about... Uh, 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 um, these, let me talk about my neighbor or this individual who's done me wrong to my best friend. And, and let me uh, uh, talk, um, speak evil about them. It doesn't work like that. All minutes, moments of the day, 24 hours, seven days a week, we must Read, listen, focus our eyes, our hearts, our soul, our strength, everything on God. This is, this is what it means when you sacrifice your body for the Lord. Use your body as a living sacrifice. Philippians 4 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true. Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. True, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, excellence, worthy of praise. Think about these things. Think about these things. Think about these things. Things. Romans 8, 5 through 6. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Mm. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh. It's, who's that? But those who live according to the Spirit, set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, self-control, patience. Faithfulness, kindness, goodness, and gentleness. Set your mind on these things. Your mind will be fruitful. If you're only if your mind is on the spirit, is set on the spirit. There's no fear. 
There's no fear. There's no fearful thoughts. You know, and here it is. There will still be many thoughts. We will stand, the flesh will bring the mind many thoughts. The enemy will still bring many thoughts. But the thing is, now you're aware of these thoughts. And you quickly rebuke these thoughts out of your mind. You quickly take these thoughts captive and send them back to where they belong. You know, the world gives you... You go to the doctor because we have a lot of anxious, anxiety, worry, thoughts that cause depression and sadness. And the and, and the and the world will prescribe us medicine, and this medicine it, 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 it isn't any better than alcohol, weed, or drugs. Why? Because it only it only numbs you, and it only allows you to ignore the thoughts. But see. The thoughts in, in this war comes it comes from a different world. Not this natural world, but a spiritual world. So in order to overcome this, this war, we must fight back spiritually. You know what I mean? And, and so um you can't win anything, you can't win anything that is supernatural with using a natural weapon, you know? And, and so many of us are in chain and, and still are in prison and have strongholds in here from the enemy. But we're not being killed. We're not being set free. And that's what we all want is to be set free. We all want to be healed. We don't want to, you know, and then here it is too. The world, when the world prescribes us these drugs, you know, there you, you don't no longer have a sober mind because you're taking all these pharmaceuticals, right? But here it is too. They say, oh, you have this. You have that. You have this, you have that, right? So now we are saying, I have this, I have that. Now we are tying, we're attaching ourselves, our identity with these negative things. Oh, I have anxiety. I have depression, you know? And so now we believe that's who we are, which is untrue and false. Why? Because we all are created from the Lord. And we all have the calling to be children of God. But if I'm walking with Satan, and if he is in control of my mind, I am not a children of God. I'm a children of the enemy, of, of the devil. But we all have... We all... We, we, we all... God wants us all. So I wanted to be healed. And the only way to be set free from this is this. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is alive. And he has victory over Satan. And if you give Jesus Christ all rights to, of your mind, of your heart, of your eyes, of your ears, of your mouth, of your hands, you will be set free. You will, your chains will break. Them strongholds will be broken down. You will be healed from the things that have bullied you for many years. Many years. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm.